Is this a familiar sight? This tabletop has really seen better days. It's got a lot of watermarks, heat marks, uh, it's got some scratches and gouges in it, and some of the veneer is loose. So what am I going to do with it? First thing I want to do is remove as much of the surface dirt as I can without actually getting into the finish that's on there. And I'm going to do that with a soft card scraper. I've made this myself out of a culinary spatula. Just cut it out and uh, sharpened off the edges. So sharpened off, made them nice and square so the corners are 90 degrees. That will scrape, but because it's soft, um, it's not too vicious. And what I've also got on here, I didn't mention earlier, is there are splatters of paint as well. So I want to get as much of the paint and other garbage off there without actually going through the finish that's on there. As I work over the surface, I'm also looking for any areas where the veneer might be getting a little bit loose. And you hear those by just tapping and you'll hear a hollow sound. Now, did you hear that? I'll come in a bit closer with my microphone. You can hear that's quite solid. And there's a telltale sign that the glue's given up and the veneer's coming loose there. The next stage is some mild detergent in water with some, while well, I use paper towels or you could use a cloth. Now that just takes the first level of grime off that you haven't managed to take with a scraper. And actually this is pretty good. Can't see an awful lot of dirt on there. In fact, I think I'll leave this corner here, not do any work on that. We should be able to see the difference. And then I just dry that off. The next step is to use some white spirits, which is a mild thinner. And again, I use a paper towel, I think, on this occasion. Now the white spirits have dried off and it's quite clear to see now, hopefully at least, the watermarks that are on here, or heat marks. And I think here, perhaps an ink mark in this gouge so I'm going to tackle those next and I'm going to try with some metal polish uh, with a little bit of water and a paper towel for example and hopefully that will cut back just enough to take those marks away. You can see how bad this area is so again a little bit of metal polish, damp paper towel or rag it's definitely having some effect now see if you can spot any continuity mistakes because uh, this is two and a half days later. Um, the cutting back with the metal polish has got rid of some of the minor marks but the, uh, the worst marks are actually going right through this polish so I'm going to have to move on to a bit more of a radical solution. And this might be the point where you would want to perhaps uh, pass your valuable item of furniture onto an expert Certainly where I would say to somebody, you know, take it to an expert in uh, refurbishment. Um, but since this isn't valuable, it's something that I'm happy to tackle myself. And you just have to make that call yourself. If it's valuable either from a monetary or a um, emotional point of view, call in an expert. So the next step I'm going to take is using some methylated spirits, some wire wool, got some more somewhere I hope. So I'm just going to work with relatively small pads of wire wool and some methylated spirits and cut that finish back and then we'll reapply a new finish to hopefully get rid of all those problems. So it's just a case of apply some methylated spirits This is 4 aught steel wool, you could go for 3 aught steel wool. 
and I don't know if you can see there, suddenly the shine goes off, finish has been melted and you pick it up in the pad. With care you can use a card scraper to do this but you want it uh, with a very fine burr on it so it's not too aggressive and the way you use it has to be uh, very gentle as well. Because we really want to just remove the finish and none of the wood below it. So whichever way you decide to remove all the finish just make sure that you've cleaned off the surface nicely afterwards with some methylated spirits. It's very obvious to see the um, areas that have been dinged before because they scraped nice and flat here and you've still got uh, a little bit of polish in there. And as I said before I'm leaving this little area here as a comparison between the old and what will be the new. Now if you remember we found in this area here that the veneer was a little bit loose. So I'm just going to try and re-adhere that by using a hot iron through some paper. This is just a block of hardwood, using it as a veneer hammer just to press that home whilst hopefully the glue takes. That sounds fine now. We should check for any other areas and then be ready to refinish. Now this wasn't meant to be a tutorial on applying French polish because uh, I'm certainly no expert at that but uh, just so happens that that's what I've got to do. So I prepared a a fresh rubber, got some cotton batting there in a clean lint free cotton cloth, apply my French polish and uh, I haven't mixed my own this time because I don't have time to leave it, put a bit of meths in there with it just to thin it a bit. Take some excess off. I'll just apply a little bit of linseed oil just to stop it dragging. circles to begin with to get some polish on. You can see one of the gouges there, two of the gouges are too deep. This is the bodying up process, it's basically just getting a few layers of polish on to begin with. And then a few strokes in the same direction just to level off. Leave that for about 10-15 minutes and then we can come back put another coat on. So that's had a good 20 minutes, it's nice and dry, we'll go on for another coat. Now I'm going to get uh, probably five coats on today, probably put another five on tomorrow and then come back and show you what it looks like. To tackle this gouge that we've got here, and it's not huge but it's a bit of a blemish and it's worth showing you, I'm going to use a shellac stick, I'm going to melt it, melt the end or soften the end up and just wipe it into that, uh, that little gouge.
that's going to set up really quick and I can cut it back with a very sharp chisel and, uh, and sand it if necessary and then continue to polish on top. So I've applied a couple of coats. It's too cold this morning to actually work out in the workshop. So uh, I've bought it indoors. And that's a good point. If you're working with shellac, you need to keep the temperature up. And what I'm gonna do now, what I've just started here, is some filling, grain filling, because I'm looking for a gloss finish. I'm using some pumice, some very fine pumice powder. I just sprinkle a little bit over the surface. And I'm going to use a rubber with pretty much just some meths on it, denatured alcohol. Just to go over that surface, it creates a little slurry which helps to fill the, the grain. And you can hear the abrasive nature of it. Before that gets a chance to, uh, to dry, I wipe off across what the grain would be with a clean paper towel. Looks pretty awful at the moment, but don't worry about that. Now let me just finish this end. And once I've done this, I'm gonna change the cover on the rubber, in fact I'll change the whole, make a new rubber because I won't want to have pumice, any abrasive when I carry on adding coats on top of this. And you can repeat this stage a number of times if, uh, if you don't get it as glossy as you want. I just want to make sure I've got all the abrasive off. So I'll give it a flick over with a brush. And I'll use some neat meths just on a rag. Let it soak through a bit. Doesn't want to be soaking, just wants to be damp. And then Strokes across. If you feel the surface, you'll find how much smoother that is. I've got a couple of areas that aren't, so I could go back and uh, use the pumice on again. So I'm back to a normal rubber now. just to continue laying on some polish. Now the final stage is what's called spiriting off. And so I've, I've used a, a piece of cloth from the other end of the rubber now. Uh, there's hardly any polish left in there. And all I'm gonna add to it is uh, some of the denatured alcohol, meths as we call it, in, uh, in the UK. Might need a bit more than that. So just want it slightly damp. No oil this time. And uh, we just do straight passes along with the grain difficult when you've got cross banding here but uh, hey we'll, uh, we'll ignore that so just straight passes now 
that helps to lift off any of the oil that's left behind, brings that out and it just brings the whole surface together. So I'll do that several times and then we're finished. Now as I said I'm no expert but if you take your time, do a little bit of practice you can get a result which is not bad at all. Uh, if you want something better, if you've got an expensive piece of furniture then for goodness sake uh, use an expert instead. But I'm happy with that. So much better than the old area. Uh, unfortunately I'm going to have to refinish the whole thing now to make it look good. But uh, it just gives you an idea of how you can make a reasonable job on a French polish. If you want less of a glare from your surface, take a, uh, a fine abrasive pad or some steel wool. Just give it a bit of a knock back. Dust that off. Apply a bit of furniture wax. Once that's had a while to sit, just buff it off. So now it's not as glary and the reflection you get in it is not quite so much like a mirror.